call uh, Mark Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to take a call on this, uh, the Statutes uh, Amendment Bill. And uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, the Honourable Simon Bridges that uh, brought this bill to the House and has been through the committee. And I do want to acknowledge the Chair of the committee, the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Um, she has done a very good job of chairing the committee and, and uh, shepherding this bill through. And I also want to uh, acknowledge, of course, the outstanding Deputy Chair, uh, Paul Foster Bell, um, who also takes a leadership role on that committee. Uh, Mr Speaker, of course, the bill tidies up legislation which needs um, provisions, provisions clarified or minor technical uh, corrections made. Uh, amendments must be technical, short and non-controversial. And it is a good way of getting legislation into the House that on its own would not get here. We do need to continue to modernise uh, our statute book in a rapidly changing world. I have to say that... Um, I was quite pleasantly surprised when the chair of the committee uh, was recognising and praising the Honourable Chris Finlayson. And that went on for about two or three minutes and I, was, I, was, I, was, I wondered when it was coming and sure enough it happened, she suddenly switched into manoeuvres. She realised uh, what she was doing. So she was searching for something to speak about. She decided that she'd switch back into a 17-hour filibuster on housing. She decided to go back to the future and try it. She had nothing else to talk about, so she started talking about and trying to reinvent the filibuster, which, unfortunately, we saw the opposition run out of steam on that uh, last week. Um, and then, and then, then, we had, then, we, then we had Mr Farfoy get up and make a very good contribution. Um, you're welcome. He talked about Nook Caraco's bill. Now, I'm lucky enough that I've travelled with Mr Farfoy um, as members of the uh, parliamentary rugby team. I know for a fact that if his luggage went missing with his uh, Giorgio Armani suits <laughs> and, his, and his rugby mouth guard, that, bo that bottom lip would be quivering, that bottom lip would be quivering, that he'd be rushing around. It's very hard to, to, um, to get another mouth guard uh, uh, to fit Chris at a very short, um, very short notice like that. So uh, the other thing, the, the other thing, the other thing that, um, the other thing that he got very excited about uh, which I found very interesting, was um, cattle rustling. Um, for some reason, he seemed to, to really hone in on, um, on rustling and also singled out and picked on our JPs. And I just want to make one comment and a serious note on that, is that um, our JPs provide an extremely important service in our communities. And one thing that's very important within our GP, JP service is that we continue to rejuvenate. We continue to find new JPs that are willing to come in, uh, that meet the standards um, set and required of a JP, and they're able to take on that role, which now requires um, fairly technical work, and also often uh, very high demand, especially in semi-rural uh, or provincial areas. So actually allowing our JPs to retire and to retain um, that JP title retired is actually very important to them and it's a way of us being able to continue to recognise them and, ag and acknowledge the service that they've given. So I just wanted to highlight that as a Members Bill and that's actually a very good uh, Members Bill. So Mr Speaker, I'm very happy to, um, to take this call on the Statutes Amendment Bill and recommend it to the House. Thank you.